Hi friends! And today we're going to talk about spooky books I liked so much I'm going to read them again. If you are new to the channel, welcome. Uh, if you've been here before, hello again. Uh, those of you who have been here before know that I do this crazy thing where I try to read 31 spooky books in October. Have I ever made it? No. Do I continue to try? Absolutely. So for how do you plan to read 31 books in October? Okay, let's talk a little bit about that before we talk about the rereads. So the first thing I do is I make lists. I make lists of all of the books that I own that I consider spooky or um, even like romances, rom-coms that have like a witchy vibe, anything like that, mid-grade spooky, anything that is like witchy, seasony, all of that. That's what I look for when it comes to a spooky book. So I'll go through any books that are on my physical TBR and I'll write those down. And then I will go through my TBR that I have on Goodreads of books that I don't own, anything spooky, write it down. Then I, like this time, will go through books that I've already read, see if there's anything that I want to reread, write those down. Because I typically listen to audiobooks or have more time for listening to audiobooks than I do reading physical books, um, one of the things that I like to do is I will go through my four or five, I don't even know how many audiobook apps I have now. I have Libby, which is through the library, Hoopla, which is through the library. Those are both free. Love those. I have Scribd and I have a subscription to that. And I have Libro FM. I have a subscription to that. And I have a subscription to Audible because I am a glutton for punishment. So I have five audiobook places that I can get books from. So one of the first things I do is I go through and see if there are any books that I already own on Libro FM or Scribd. A lot of times if it's like a favorite spooky book I'll already own it. Um, so I'll go through and then I will make a note on um, my page um, like this one. One of the first books is The Girls Are Never Gone and I have LFM so I know that I have that on Libro FM um, and I know that I don't need to like when the time comes, I don't have to look for the audiobook. I know I already have it and I know where I have it at. Um, it's also good for um, holds through Hoopla and the library because this is like the second week of September. Now is a good time to go through um, and see if, if the books that I that are available from the library are actually able to put on a hold and will get to me in time. Um, I tried to do it at the beginning of September, but it, it is what it is. Sometimes I have more time than other times. Um, but yes, anything that I can put a hold on, I put a hold on if I think it's going to be there. Even if I don't think it's going to be there, I'll put a hold on it. Um, sometimes my library, because I read fairly quickly and typically will go through my book within a day or two, they will give you like, um, they have like a random jump the line thing where if you're someone who reads audiobooks really quick, um, and like the person before you returned it quicker than what they expected, they'll let you jump the line, read the book, and then the next person will get it around the same time that they had expected to get it. It's a really weird thing. Um, it's only happened to me a few times, but it definitely has happened to me before where I'll get like a, you jumped the line, a uh, little message. And then I make sure I read it very quickly so that I can then pass it on to the next person because I am very appreciative that I got to jump the line. Uh, anyway, that's neither here nor there. Uh, so yeah, so I go through all of my different audiobook apps, look to see where I have the book, if I already have it, if I don't have it, um, or if it's not available on one of the free services, um, is it something that I want to buy with my Libro or my Scribd? Nope. With my Libro or my Audible credits? I typically use Audible credits only for Audible originals or Audible only books because um, some authors still do exclusives through Audible only um, and that's pretty much the only thing I use those for anymore but you never know. So I pretty much went through my entire list of 35-ish books 
and made a list of everywhere that I have books available to me from. Actually it's 35 books not counting the sweep series. I've been trying to read those for like five years now. I will eventually get to them. I promise I will. If they had audiobooks I probably would have read them already but I have to read them with my eyeballs. Ugh, it's so tiring. So today we're going to talk about some spooky books that I loved so much that I want to read again. Some of them are from this year, some are from years past. I've got some adult, I've got some mid-grade, I've got some YA. So let's go over the books. The first of which is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. This came out last year. It follows three sisters who disappeared when they were very young children and they were missing for a couple of weeks I think and then just magically reappeared and no one knows where they were. They don't have any memory of the time. Um, they don't know where they were, what happened to them or anything like that and we're seeing them as the youngest of the three sisters is getting ready to I think she's like a junior or a senior in high school. She's in the later years of high school. Um, and the other two girls have both left home. And they discover that the oldest sister is missing again. And so the other two sisters are trying to find her to see if they can figure out where she is and what happened to her. This book uh, has some body horror, but not anything too crazy. It didn't bother me. I have body horror and body gore issues. Um, but I think because this is a YA, it wasn't real bad. Um, I don't even know what I rated this but I'm sure it was like a five star because it's Crystal Sutherland and I love her. I got my pretty signed book plate and it says for Jess I am the thing in the dark which is just creepy um, and I love it and uh, if you don't know not a book that I plan to reread right now but because we're talking about Crystal Sutherland she did write my favorite book of all time a semi definitive list of worst nightmares and you can see it right there just saying because because we're talking about her might as well right um but yeah so gonna reread this one the next one is one that I it's part of like uh, we're gonna call it part of a trilogy even though they're not really a trilogy just follow me okay so the first is Rules for Vanishing by Kate Alice Marshall and this is the first book in like a group of connected stories I read this last year during the 31 books of October um it gave me the freaking heebie-jeebies. It is so spooky, creepy. I loved it. I had a great time. I read this um, in my drive to um, my writing retreat with Wallace Jaisha and Katie Ann and I am very excited to get back to this for reasons. Okay so the second book which I didn't realize the books were connected until Julie and Amber had this discussion with me and I was like oh well okay I'm not smart. The second book is Our Last Echoes and um, I haven't read that one yet so that one's not one that I'm rereading but the third book I have read um, I actually just read it like last month or maybe the month before and that is These Fleeting Shadows and so the three books are not sequels and they don't really contain the same characters necessarily they don't have any of the same main characters and they are but they are connected in like this really weird way that if you're not paying attention you're not going to catch and so I know I just read this one but I want to reread the three of them again back to back just for experience reasons. Um, I guess I should tell you what these are about. This book follows a main character whose sister disappeared the year before. There is a specific year in this town, nope, a specific day of the year in this town where um, if you go um, in pairs to this spot in the woods you can find this road and this road will take you um, to places unknown and there are specific rules that you need to follow to go on this vanishing road and our main character wants to find her sister so she is going to go with a group of friends and go on this vanishing road to try to find her sister and bring her sister home. It's fucking creepy. Uh, these fleeting shadows follows our main character who has lived her life mostly away from her mother's familial home which is this gorgeous house on the front of the cover. Um, her mother and her stepdad and her are brought back to the house uh, when her grandfather dies and she finds out things that make her need to stay there for a year and weird shit starts happening. The house is like a maze. Um, they hear things during the night. They um, she sees like ghosts and she's kind of weird and one of my favorite things about this and you have to listen to the audiobook one of my favorite things about this book is that the audiobook or the book itself 
talks about um, th they're like what are they called I can never remember what they're called but they're like clips glimpses specters at whatever the creatures are that she sees whatever they're called um, they always are described with like differing sounds of voices it's like some echo some grind some are like a clickety clackety sounds and in the audiobook they actually make their dialogue with whatever the affected sound is and it's fucking creepy I loved it so much so definitely recommend this one as well let's switch gears to mid-grade I want to read two reread two mid-grades by the same author Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega I read this one either last year or the year before I don't remember um, but this book is about two girls and one of the girls is Nana's cat and they basically have to save the ghosts of our main character Lucily. It says for Lucily Luna ghosts are more than just the family business. Shortly before Halloween Lucily and her best friend Sid cast a spell that accidentally awakens malicious spirits wreaking havoc throughout their hometown of St. Augustine, Florida. Together they must join forces with Sid's witch grandmother Babette and her tubby tabby chunk to fight the haunting head on and reverse the curse to save the town and Lucilie's firefly spirits before it's too late. Um, so Lucilie can see like her ancestors and the spell that they cast um, begins to harm her ancestors and her family and so um, Lucilie and Sid have to along with chunk try to uh, solve the mystery and to stop the curse from happening and I think this is a great exploration into uh, Latin families and a lot of their beliefs and it was a really good story that I absolutely loved it was super cute also by Clarabelle A. Ortega is a book that I read earlier this year and gave it a 5.25 which on my rating scale is a perfect book and that is Witchlings. I raved about Witchlings at length um, when I read it. I could still rave about it at length now. Um, I love it. It is one of the best mid-grades I've ever read. It is so joyful and hopeful and yet creepy and shows like the dark side of humanity while also showing like the happy side of humanity. It follows three female characters. Um, they live in the society of witches where once you reach a certain age you are like everybody in that town is brought together and the kids of that age are split into different covens um, that is like a sorted by magic thing and there's only so many kids per coven and then whoever is left over is called a spare and they're like the spare coven and they're kind of treated like indentured servants they're not allowed to use the same powers that the other groups are allowed to use um, they are um, really basically they are they do work for like the higher class families and get paid measly amounts of money to do all this magical work grunt work um, that the rich people don't want to do our three main characters are sorted into this spare coven but it's like our main character and then her worst enemy and this girl that she doesn't know and if the coven doesn't like agree to form then they can lose their magic forever and the girls coven you know at their sorting tries to break up isn't working very well clearly because it's her and her worst enemy and a girl she doesn't know and they decide to take um I think it's a I forget what it's called the impossible task or the whatever it whatever the task is they try to do this task um that basically is nearly impossible to do um, and the girls decide that they want to do it and there's this monster that's haunting them all and they have to uh, defeat the monster to be able to become a full coven and keep their powers um, it was fantastic I loved every minute of it there's like sorting quizzes that you can take um, I am moth house which is like a whole thing I loved it it was fantastic I want to read it again so I will read it again and then we have two more books that we're going to talk about which are adult but this is where we get to like Jessica does not typically like adult spooky books they're usually too spooky for Jessica honestly I like the YA because it's creepy but it's not like really high on like body horror or gore or blood or other things that people tend to put in like gross horror books 
Um, I like, <laughs> I like adult rom-coms. Spooky. Okay, that's what I like. Anyway, uh, The X Hex by <laughs> Aaron Sterling, which is also the author of Hex Hall, Rebel Bell, what's her name? Rachel Hawkins. There we go. I knew I would get there eventually. Um, so this book is about a girl who, um, in a moment of hate, set a spell, a, a fake spell, on her ex-boyfriend. And it was a really funny spell um, that, like, his hair would never part the right way and that he'd never be able to take a girl all the way. You know, fun things like that. And, uh, lo and behold, it wasn't such a fake spell after all. Uh, he has to come back to town, I think it's like a decade later, nine years later. And the spell starts to take effect and there's other things going on in the town and magic's getting weird. And they have to work together to save magic and it is, so it's like a second chance romance. Um, there's a lot, it, it was, it was fantastic. I loved it. Uh, and the second book, uh, The Kiss Curse comes out in October and I pre-ordered the audiobook. So um, I want to reread this one before I get to the audiobook. And the last book that we're going to talk about today that I would like to reread in October is Not the Witch You Wed by April Asher. This is the first book in the Supernatural single series. This book follows the middle sister, no, the oldest sister of a set of triplets and in their magical world um, anytime there are magical triplets born, they are considered like what will eventually be, um, the high witch of their council. Um, they're shifters and they're types of demons and cupids and guardian angels and all kinds of things in this world. And so our, our oldest sister actually doesn't have any magic. And so her title of being like the head witch is passed on to her younger sister. Um, she at, in this book teams up with um, her ex-best friend who uh, he did something to her in her past that has made her not be his friend anymore. It's kind of like an enemies to lovers um, or a hate to love. I don't really know how you want to put that. But basically they're both reaching an age where if they don't marry uh, someone then the elders of their her witch coven and his shapeshiftery coven um, are going to pick someone for them to wed. So they decide to like fake date in order to um, get people off their backs so that they can actually find someone they want to date, which means they're going to end up wanting to date each other. You know how it goes. For me, I mean, it has fake dating, which I love. Enemies to lovers or hate to love, whichever way you want to put it, which I love. Um, it's the magic system in this book series that is so good. I love the magic system and I love that the main like catalyst of this story the main villain is not the outside world a lot of times when you have like these um secretive magic societies the the villain is like their secret getting out and regular humans finding out about them but this is not it this is their society is their problem and i i loved this book so much it was fantastic and i have an arc of the second book which is not your not your ex's hexes tongue tied but I have an arc of that and if I get done with this book and the 97,000 other books I would like to read that it doesn't come out till February uh but I want to read it anyway because uh excitement <laughs> this book was really good and the second book follows the middle sister um and I'm interested to see where things go for her after where they ended up in this book so this is a very small sampling of what I plan to read in October um, but these are all rereads. So these are the rereads that I plan to reread in October. Reread, we're reread. Yeah, that is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, including a new stationery haul, which will be coming up as soon as my stationery gets in. I'm very excited. I'm going to be doing a whole, th it's a whole thing. And I'm going to be doing a rebrand soon. So uh, also, if you don't want to miss that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye.